it really is quite a, a low percentage of people who are trans. I mean, it's really small, but in the celebrity world, yeah. it's, it's extraordinary. Charlie's Theron's kids, Cher's kids, Cynthia Nixon, Sting. There was a huge Jamie Lee Curtis. Yep. Jamie yep. Lee Curtis, of yep. course, yep. David Tennant, of course. Yep. Just it's, it's absurd. So, I mean, yep. how can they not see that this is obviously then a social contagion of the we're the better people because we're having this kind of fashionable thing yeah. going on? Well, it's, but, you know, they know more about I mean, it's, it's like, you know, Emma Thompson cares more about the planet than anybody else. That's why she flies on a private plane from one side of the planet to the other to tell us about it. I mean, it's such hypocrisy. Tell you what, though, she is a brilliant actress. So is David Tennant. No, but she's, I can't stand she's, like, she's next level. <laughs> I mean, you you do have to disconnect from these characters. I, you know, Tom Cruise, I can't stand the Scientologist. I think he's a nutcase, has to be, but he's a great actor. I've been saying yeah. this for, for a while, though, about Tom Cruise. It's the strangest thing in the world that, for some reason, I mean, microaggressions, all these things, you're mm -hmm. cancelled, you're a right-wing lunatic, you're this, you've, yeah. you've looked at a woman when you shouldn't have done. I mean, a, a lot of the time, and for good for good reason, there's, yeah, there yeah. was a lot of men who were, all that stuff. There's a guy who pretty much heads up a cult. He, he might as well be the head of it. Yeah. Nobody cares. No one cares. He just, just does his thing. Yeah. Well, the, yes. I mean, if you make money for Hollywood... Ah. It would appear that you, you know, and you're Hollywood immune. Makes, makes money for him and for Scientology. Yes, but that is uh, another thing. But I, I, I've got a thing with Scientology. They, the yeah, I mean, it's it's absurd that, that that he gets away with it, and and I mean, all the exposés. What's the Alex? Um, Gal Gibney, Gal Gibney, 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 who, who did the the documentary about it? Absolutely incredible. Yeah, and yet it somehow doesn't. Blow, as you say, if it was a but one, if they. If it was a documentary about a, a celebrity who said one transphobic thing, boom, they'd be, you know, cancelled. He continues. And and also the films he's making, he's now more and more in charge of them. He basically produces them. He's yep. every part of them is Tom Cruise. And they increasingly show him in a very Scientology, Scientological <laughs> way because it's him, you know. There is was he wearing movie. uniforms now? Often <laughs> he is. Oh, really? Well, he is. Of oh, course, wow. he's in the army doing all of these course, different yeah, kinds of yeah, things. And then there are ones where he dies and comes back to life, which is a really? fundamental part of Scientology. Yeah, of your, course. your body spirit goes into another body. Yeah. He dies. Well, I'm a deacon. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just bonkers. I think I, yeah. I wonder to an extent. Okay, these celebrities—they do live a weird life. They've got more money than they need by the time they're twenty. Yeah. And where do you go from there? Do you think there's something about the celebrity life then that, especially for the kids of celebrities, yep. that encourages them to need to look and be different and looked at? Well, I mean, it, it's all about. I mean, the question is, people who is it a particular kind of person? who wants and needs validation from people looking at them and applauding. Mm. Of course, it must be. Um, and it, it's possible that psychologically a lot of, especially Hollywood actors, have a, have psychiatric issues if, if they need that amount of validation from people. Um, obviously not all, but, but some must. And how are you going to get an extra layer of validation at, at the moment it's the environment and social justice, maybe race to, to a lesser extent. Um, yeah. But trans is, you know, trans is, although it's controversial for many of us, it sails through as a sort of unchallengeable subject in America where it really matters. It's insane. It's just like saying, I am kind. Did you, did you ever used to watch Absolutely Fabulous? Oh, yeah. So I've been going through it again because my wife is Argentinian, so I sort of introduced oh, her to all the English stuff that she'd yeah. never have seen and loving it. And they were so ahead of the game. Jennifer Saunders, there's a there's a bit that her daughter, who she hates, is pregnant and she's being horrible to her, saying, awful, awful. And she realizes that the the father's black and she's going to have a mixed race baby. So suddenly <laughs> she goes, oh, darling, darling, sweetie, sweetie, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Because it's, yeah. a, it's a prop, a of fashion Of course, prop. yeah. This was 20 years ago. They brony were so points, ahead. brony points, yeah. Yeah, and now you could obviously, an abs fabs of today it would be a trans yeah child. absolutely tell me about um rupaul's drag race now what what is that first i know a lot of people do know but some won't yeah. know i mean i don't watch myself much i i used to work god ages ago uh, again in decades in a in an office where the the, the entire team uh, of rupaul were a tiny little company in london and were just you know doing stuff for channel four and everything randy and fenton were the two producers still are the executive producers of RuPaul, gay couple. Hmm. Um, but what, I mean, and, and for people who don't know, it's a com competition between extravagantly dressed and bizarre, the more bizarrely behaving, the better drag queens. 
Um, and they, they all, they do performances. They get, uh, judged by a panel. Um, they say appalling things. They, you know, bitch about each other, et cetera, et cetera. It's very popular among young people, girls in particular, which is why it matters that, that what is on there. So recently they had a performance where a woman who thinks she's a man, a trans man, um, and has had her breasts removed um, by the name of Gottmik, um, she came on uh, doing an act in which her uh, these fake hands were removing her breasts, and then she was wielding this bag of what were purported to be the bloodied breasts that had been removed. I mean, it was just, uh, we know at the best of times that, that girls have body image issues, body harming, bulimia, all the rest of it. These are historically, you know, have been around for a long time. The, the whole um, sense that you want to cut yourself off literally from your female body has just found a new way of expressing itself, which is in the whole trans man narrative where girls think, if I just remove my breasts or if I look like a boy, then I can just divest myself of this horrible sort of biology I have. So to have a really popular multi-award winning show like Drag Race push that on mainstream TV is just appalling. And this isn't you being prudish, really. It's not about, oh, there's blood on TV or whatever. It's it's the most vulnerable group, which I think is well, fair to the say. The blood young. on TV is an interesting point because you there are actually really strict rules about surgery, blood on, uh, you know. Ah. I've, I've done loads of medical shows. I've, I, I, loads of times I've been told, you can't show that. That is too much. Because you got, you're beaming into people's homes. And if somebody switches that on, <laughs> and, you know, I, I filmed, I've filmed open heart surgery and it, it was great stuff. Most of it's never gone on TV because it was just too bloody. I can't watch that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. Okay, uh, yeah. And so, so I don't think if you, if you thought, would they be able, Drag Race or indeed any sort of entertainment show to sort of joke about, you know, open heart surgery or amputations or something, people would think, whoa, that is a wee bit strange. Here they are, amputated breasts in a, in a plastic bag with fake blood it's just yeah. it's a it's bizarre that it's thought to be acceptable for me though t targeting it I, I, we, I think we can agree that young women are probably the most vulnerable people in a, our society i mean just I, I i talk about this probably too much but you know when mm -hmm. i was in argentina i was looking into exorcism and yep. i filmed exorcism and all of that stuff and it was amazing that the demographic fitted like a glove to the young women who are getting trans surgery no oh, really oh, right. exactly the same thing Gen yeah. the gendered yeah, soul yeah. was a demon over yes. there yeah, the, and, yeah. and we would laugh people here would laugh and go god what a silly culture over yes. there in argentina yeah it's the same thing and if and yes. the same thing if you speak out you're seen as someone yeah. who hates god who doesn't believe uh, in it so, yes. and here if you speak out really you stop these yeah. women there's obviously something yeah. about 15 to 20 year old young women and girls that yeah. that is making them feel extremely vulnerable they look they're sexualized well it's no wonder they just i mean not far from here, the private schools where girls, you know, were, you know, alleging rape, sexual harassment, mm. you know, the, the private schools had to investigate. There's a whole culture where boys own porn that they can get through the, the internet and girls receiving all these messages that, that, that either tell them that the way to win approval is to be really highly sexualized or, you know, just try and opt out of it by saying, I mean, the, a lot of these girls say they instantly stop getting the male attention when they become a boy. Of course they do, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and, and so it, that's sort of, uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be the only two options for girls that are either, you know, to pursue the highly sexualized, you know, and be popular with the boys or to, you know, deny their, their femaleness. Yeah, yeah. Or get your demon out as it, yes. as it was in Argentina. Yeah, yeah. And and so sad, these young women. Right? Yeah. You want to reach through the, because you're supposed as a documentarian, you're supposed to, as you know, yeah. you're supposed to watch you know, and, and help a little bit, but you can't be going in and yeah. saying, I did say afterwards, like, you know, I, I don't, you know, maybe you need therapy and you need to yeah. talk these things through and you're going to feel better in a few years. It's a difficult stage right now. Yeah. But, you know, at least an exorcism, although it is a terrifying thing to go through that might emotionally scar someone, at least it's not going to physically scar them in yeah. a way that, yeah. you know. It sounds like, I, from reading your article, um, that, mm -hmm. that, that RuPaul himself 
was wasn't initially actually woke was just a drag act who's been a bit forced into the woke side in recent years. Well, yes, the the woke part of it has been added on. I mean, through pressure, God. but the misogyny was always there. I'm not saying. Okay. Yeah, I mean, drag is fundamentally misogynistic. I mean, it's a huge, tall guy, Rue, who dresses up as a woman and then behaves in a highly sexualized way doing things if he was to do it as a guy it might sound a bit more brutal and therefore it's a sort of it's a sort of um it's it's a demeaning portrayal of women and it came out of before you know he was you know in the meat market area and everything he talks about him you know being a, a you know drag queen in the sort of really raunchy parts of new york what's a meat market it, it was a, it's an it's the area in um New York. In New York, where, where there were the meat that was the actual meat market, but oh, there was loads of clubs grew up near there and they were rough and ready. 